Greetings, I'm Zachary Hapner. I'm pleased to share with you this Dvar Torah for Parshavat Vayera. Let's work backwards. Makat Bechorot, the plague of the firstborn. Sun contrasts and corresponds to Shmini Atzeret, where the sages say that God wants a singular special day with his chosen people. The ninth and eight plagues contrast and correspond to Sukkot. Locust, which cover the eye of the sky. The locust make it impossible to see the sky. And they ate all the gathered food. The holiday of Sukkot, we celebrate the faith we have with God, and he will sustain us throughout the winter and until the next seasons when more food becomes available. Locust make the Egyptians realize that they cannot put their food away for later. There is no food, no savings account, no dividend stocks. Their reliances are unreliable. And on Sukkot, when we peek through the sky of the Sukkah and see the blue sky, on that holiday, we rely on God as our reliance, which is going to make us sustained through the winter and through the following spring. Darkness, too, corresponds to Sukkot. Sukkot is a holiday of shade. The shade, not from the walls of the Sukkah, but from the Anane Kavod and the Sakach of the Sukkah. The opposite of divine shade is darkness and depression. On Sukkot, we tell God that we have been and continue to rely on Him as a giver. But in the plague of darkness, the Egyptians had nobody and no God to rely upon. They were in the darkness and depression. Nobody ventured leave his house for three days. This leads us to this week's parsha, the seventh plague. Hail, hail, Barad, corresponds to Yom Kippur. In the plague of hail, the Egyptians are warned, Shlach ha'ez et miknecha, send away your goats. On Yom Kippur, we send away the scapegoat. The hail was intertwined with fire inside the hail. The Yom Kippur Avodah corresponds to the death of Nadav and Avihu, who died by fire inside their bodies, but their bodies stayed intact. Pharaoh tells Moses in the plague of hail, Hashem tzadik ve'ani ve'ami harashaim, God is the tzadik, and I and my nations are the wicked ones. The confessions of Yom Kippur are rabbinic, but they're also biblical, because Yom Kippur is for the soul's atonement, l'chaper al nafshotechem. And Pharaoh's confession may have brought some atonement. Moses left the city to pray to God to stop the hail. The scapegoat, too, leaves the city. In the Yom Kippur service, one goat stays for the temple sacrifice. One, the other one, leaves as the scapegoat. In the plague of hail, it's reversed. Moses leaves, and Pharaoh stays inside the city. These b- bizarro comparisons present a bizarro universe, which corresponds to the Egyptian antithesis of Jewish belief. Jews only rely on one God and no other God. Egyptians had become accustomed to relying on what they consider reliable, anything except God. This echoes the echo chamber that Superman uses to disable and defeat General Zod. General Zod had thought the echo chamber was dangerous and outside was safe territory. Clever Superman reversed the nature of the chamber, making the chamber safe and outside unsafe. Superman wins, General Zod loses. Similarly, when God is recognized, the Yom Kippur service is typical. The goat for God is inside, and the scapegoat is outside, but with the Egyptians' perversion, the good goat is outside and the scapegoat is inside. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom.